Next, let's learn how to use our TI-89 calculator to solve simultaneous equations and apply this to particular examples we'll have to solve in our subject. When we have a system of equations, we could solve the system algebraically, which we can do, but that takes a lot of effort and time, and time is a precious commodity on the AP physics exam. I would like to illustrate a technique by solving problem 8.9. The problem reads this way. The vector diagram shows forces in equilibrium. Find T1 and T2. In this case, T1 and T2 are forces. They're acting on an object. There's a third force, 68 newtons, which is shown as well. We would like to use a technique of resolving these vectors into components. Well, I would like to take T1 and resolve it into a horizontal component, which I'll call T1x, and a vertical component, which I'll call T1y. Since I have a 50 degree angle here, then I can let T1 be the hypotenuse of that, T1x is the horizontal part of that, and T1y is going to be the vertical part of that right triangle. Let me remind you about your trig relationships, sine, cosine, and tangent. And perhaps you'll remember this mnemonic, SOKATOA, where the sine is equal to the opposite side of the triangle divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Tangent is the opposite divided by the adjacent. Since T1 is the hypotenuse and T1x is the adjacent side of this right triangle, this 50 degree angle, and T1y is the opposite sign, then I could say that T1x is going to be equal to T1 times the cosine of 50 degrees. And likewise, T1y is going to be equal to T1 times the sine of 50 degrees. And now I can replace T1 with its components, T1x and T1y. I want to play the same game with T2, breaking it into its horizontal and vertical components. And now I'm going to replace T2 with its horizontal and vertical parts. And I'm going to redraw this free body diagram showing the forces related to each other just in their horizontal and vertical components. Now, since this object's in equilibrium, that means that the upward forces have to balance the downward forces, and the left-hand forces have to balance the right-hand forces. So I can write two equations, a horizontal equation and a vertical equation. Horizontally, I can say that T1 cosine of 50 degrees is equal to T2 times the cosine of 35 degrees. Likewise, I can write a vertical equation. The upward force has to be equal to the sum of the two downward forces. 68 newtons is going to be equal to T2 sine of 35 plus T1 sine of 50. All right, now I've got a system of two equations and two unknowns. I don't know what T1 is. I don't know what T2 is. I can use my tried and true method of substitution. Solve the horizontal equation for T1. Substitute that into the second equation. Solve for T2. Then take whatever number I get for T2, plug it back in, and figure out what T1 is. To give you an idea of what that looks like, I'll do that step by step. First of all, I'm going to take the horizontal equation and solve that for T1. Next, I'm going to take that expression for T1 and put it into the second equation. I notice that in the second equation, I have a common factor, T2. So I could factor that T2 out and recognize that the sine of 50 degrees divided by the cosine of 50 degrees is equal to the tangent of 50 degrees. Now I'm trying to find T2, so divide both sides by the parentheses. And now I just have a variable on the right-hand side and numbers on the left-hand side. So let me substitute those things into my calculator and come up with a number. I get that T2 is equal to 43.88 newtons. And now I can take that and put that back into my T1 equation. And again, I pull out my handy dandy calculator and I come up with a number. And so now what I've got here is a tried and true method of algebraic substitution. That's how many of you probably have tried to solve these problems. What I would like to illustrate now is a technique in which you can use your calculator, your TI-89, to solve this system without having to go through all that algebra. I'm going to turn on my calculator. I'm going to make sure that I am in degree mode. And I am using something called the approximate feature here, which means that all my numbers are going to end up as decimals rather than algebraic expressions. I have two equations. One of them is right here. The second one is right there. 
I want to use the solve feature, so I'm going to press F2, solve. And now I'm going to let T1 be equal to X and T2 equal to Y. And I'm going to say that my first equation is X, and you have to say multiplying the cosine of 50 degrees is equal to Y times the cosine of 35 degrees. I next type a comma and say I want you to solve this equation for one of those variables. And as we did before, I'm going to let us solve for T1. So I'm going to say solve this equation for X. I close the parentheses, I hit the enter button, and now I have an expression that says that X is equal to 1.27437 times Y. That's basically equivalent to the expression T1 is T2 times the cosine 35 divided by the cosine of 50. Now I want to put in the second equation. So I hit F2, solve, so I hit enter, and I want to put in the second equation. The second equation says that 68 is equal to T1, which is X, again you've got to use that multiplication sign, times the sine of 50 degrees plus Y, that's what T2 is, times the sine of 35 degrees. I want to solve this equation for Y, so I'm going to type a comma, Y, and close the parentheses. Now here's the important feature. I want to go over and say I want to solve that equation with, and that's what this straight vertical bar in the first column is, with X is equal to this number that I got up here. So I type my up button, I highlight the X, I hit enter. So now I've told the calculator to solve that second equation with this value for X. I hit enter, and when I do, it tells me that Y is equal to 43.8765. That's essentially 43.88 Newtons. That's what we got. Finally, I want to figure out what X is. So I'm going to go back up to my original equation and say, I want you to solve that equation for X, but now I want it with y equals to this number, this 43.87. So I type the vertical bar with, I hit the up arrow key to highlight that, and I hit enter. When I hit the enter button, now I get that x is equal to 55.9151, essentially 55.92. And now I have done in a minute what took me more like three or four minutes knowing what to look for in these equations in order to solve them. This is a very handy feature. You'll find that you'll use it quite a bit. So, in this lesson, Lesson 8, Friction, we have talked about what friction is, we've discussed free body diagrams, we've introduced the relationship, the frictional force is mu times the normal force, and we've showed how to use the TI-89 solve feature. So for now, that's it.